Howdy folks. In this video I'm going to show you how to correct an image like this that has sort of a, a, a lack of contrast and overall cast to it as if you've taken you know some smoky glass for example and placed it over top of the image which I suppose could exactly be the case in an aquarium shot like this but uh, you often get this kind of an overcast when uh, you're taking indoor pictures for example with lighting that's not adequate um, you just see that it's like as if there's a grayness overcast to it and uh, and the colors aren't very vibrant you know there's there's all kinds of things going on here that can be improved um, now if you would like to um, play with the exact same image here it is in the public domain and it's available here at publicdomainpictures.net and uh, just look up shark tank at that site and you can find it i'll leave links to uh, the image as well in the description okay so um, back to Photoshop here uh, there are some auto tools that can uh, actually help quite a lot and often do a really good job but often they don't but let's let's go through them uh, one at a time so uh, we can say image auto tone okay and uh, we get an immediate improvement right you know the ferns look much better the fish are more defined the, the color of the water is more striking that kind of thing um, I'm going to go to the history tab here. Uh, if you don't know where your history window is, if you can't find it, um, you can go to window and uh, and select history. Okay. So uh, let's go back to open here. So that was tone. Now if we go to image auto contrast, okay, uh, we get similar but not the same results, right? I think uh, the auto tone actually worked better on the plants. Um, Go back to our original here, and we have an auto color. Okay, and again, I think that does better than the auto contrast in this particular case here on on some of the features along the right here in particular. So those are the auto tools, and you know, as I mentioned, you get a varying degree of success with those. So um, let's go into the manual tools here. So if we go image adjustments and the the, the the more uh, common ones are going to be uh, the ones here, the six at the top, okay? Or I should say seven. Um, but let's go ahead and let's start with levels, okay? And i got to bring this window over here. Now, the thing about levels is uh, ideally you would have a nice curve in here at, with, with the tail ends um, meeting at the edge, right? So you see how there's a there's sort of a blank space here, or even if you had just a very thin, thin line running along here for any distance, like there's a little bit of a line here. Uh, I'll pull this over here so we see more of the image. If you just pull this over to where the, uh, the curve starts to build, you'll see an immediate improvement, okay? Uh, now we don't have to do that so much on this side, although it may, um, may give us some improvement there. So you can pull either end and you can also adjust in the in the center. So um, that's normally at one there. I do think that pulling it here just a little bit. Yeah, it just gives a little bit of I want to get the sort of the sweet spot. Where you, you what you, what you're trying for here when you're making an adjustment is, you know, adjust it till it looks better, and then not worse, right? Like you can, you know, oh, a little bit of lightning is nice, but too far and it's too light, right? So you you kind of swing back and forth a little bit until you go, okay, this is the best that this tool, the levels tool, for example, here can give me, and then you can go ahead and press OK. Um, now the other thing that you should know about using a tool like this you'll you can you can forget what the original looked like right so there's a little preview checkbox here if you uncheck that that's the original and then when you check it that's the improved version right so so you'll see that sort of that overcast of grayness seems to disappear a little bit and that's what one of the things the level tool is really good at is taking away that gray overtone that that can overlay something and that's not always gray it can be a kind of a color cast but um, it, it does it does bring things better into I guess better levels really is what we're talking about 
So um, let's go ahead and click OK on that, and we'll keep that, uh, and we'll work from here. So uh, another area that we like to go into here, I would next go into curves. Okay. So here's our curves window. Now, uh, curves by its name is actually you're you're actually defining a curve like so, right? You can you can take that line and you can drag it. Now, if we go ridiculously one way or the other, we can see the kind of effect that uh, that you're pulling toward, right? So it it does seem to me like this can use a bit of you know it, it's still kind of washed out at this brightness, I suppose I'll call it. Uh, so we can pull down until the fish seem to look more natural in tone, right? And uh, that's actually pretty dramatic and cool looking there. I wonder what the plants look like. Let's see. Okay. So it it's it's darker than we may ultimately want it, but uh, it's a definite improvement over. Uh, you know the straight line which is a bit washed out okay so let's let's go and let's get that tone on the fish going cool because they really are the focus right and that's something else to remember is when you're when you're adjusting a photograph um, say you have a person in the photograph you want to generally adjust so that their face looks the best and then if other things get a bit washed out or too dark or whatever at least the focal point of the photograph is looking as best as it can be right so um, I think that's pretty good, okay? And j just so you know, again, you can, you know, preview and unpreview here. And you can actually add uh, other nodes to this curve, okay? So you can, you can actually make a wild-looking curve if that's required. Generally, I don't find that it is, but, um, you know, results may differ, right? So... Uh, here now we have, uh, I think, you know, the focal point here. These fish are looking pretty good here. Now, um, let's also go into um, brightness and contrast. And let's see what this does here. So uh, now, if we bring that up, I think the, f the fish get a little washed out there. You know, for my eye, if if you go kind of crazy and you and you're having trouble zeroing this out again, you can numerically put it in, right? So just make sure this is selected, and put it back to zero, right? Um, let's see. Ooh, the contrast looks interesting there. Let's see. You know, that way it's too washed out, but I do believe there's a bit of improvement there. So let's. Uh, and go too far and see if you go too far you lose detail in the plants right so but just enough in the yeah just right there I think again now it's not a big difference let's see pull a little bit more yeah right around there okay so now we have a better contrast on the picture, all right? And we can try, let's go into exposure. Okay, so here's our exposure tool. And let's just see if we get any, uh, too much washout. No, 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 let's zero this out again. Let's see if the offsets, I mean, you might wanna go for something dramatic like that, but I'm going to say no to that gamma correction. Let's see if anything. Okay, that's no good that way. I think it actually, uh, a little bit of gamma correction in this direction does improve it. It makes for a darker, moodier piece, but um, yeah, it looks sharper, more details. All right, let's go for this. So again, here we can sort of preview. This things just look a little bit more distinct with the, the gamma correction here. All right, we'll click OK. Now, uh, since we have the history thing open, an inter a nice thing that you can do is you can, you can go back. Now, that's our original, right? 
and you can kind of step through you know the improvements that we've made or just leap from one end to the other to see uh, what's going on right so um, now other tools we have our vibrance let's check that out Doesn't look much better there. Saturation. You can pull that. You know, saturate. If you go all the way down with saturation, you basically end up with a black and white photograph, right? You pull it all the way up, and things get more uh, neon looking. Um, it's a great way to pull your color intensity up. Well, color saturation, I guess, is the official term. But I'm not seeing any great improvement here and adjustments now we have our hue and saturation that we can play with right now uh, this can you know give you some really funky results you can go through a whole rainbow of uh, hues right but not appropriate for this now we've already played with saturation Well, that's very blue looking that's interesting um, now again I'm gonna say I'm gonna say we're good nothing here is in, is helping out and color balance now color balance now I don't have a person here but often when you're dealing with a photograph particularly something under fluorescent lighting um, you want to pull down the red you know, pull towards cyan on the red and pull up on the yellow, uh, and it, or or you know, pull toward the yellow. Make things more yellow and less red, and uh, that often improves uh, faces and skin tones in indoor pictures. Okay, so uh, but here, let's see, do we get any? Well, yeah, I guess it depends on what your eye is looking for. The, the blues are nice underwater, right? But uh, the plants do, if we pull toward the red, the plants in the corner do look quite a bit. I'm going to say a little bit toward the red is appropriate here. I think the um, probably the coral up here improves a little bit from that. To my eye yeah okay so let's let's give it a little bit of red there I generally find that um, at least when dealing with people the magenta green slider here doesn't do much but um, then I'm gonna say I'm not getting much results out of that in this case and here's where we could really turn it you know to the blue of the ocean there and then the yellow takes that. No, I think that's good at zero. Okay, so just a little touch on toward the red there. And we have a much improved image, right? So that washed out image, and now we have a much better, uh, you know, tone and contrast and leveling, etc. And then, um, you know, the other tool that you may be interested in, in a general sense, if you go into your filters, sharpen unsharp mask okay and um, let's see if we adjust the radius here you can see things like here's a preview right up here the default is right around here if we uncheck the preview not much of a difference at all in the main image right at sort of the default values and if we dial it up so that you can notice it actually makes the fish look more kind of cut out in this case so the sharpness isn't doing a doing us any uh, real benefit here um, and I tend to find like with the you know there's a lot of grain in the water I tend to find that uh, images with a lot of grain 
don't really benefit from the unsharp mask, but some images, uh, it's just wonderful that the effect that it can have. Um, particularly if you've, um, let's cancel this. Uh, if, if you've brought your image down to a size where you're, where you're looking at it at a, at a one pixel per pixel on your screen. So if you go view 100%, right? That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, it's best to be viewing at 100% to see the full effects of sharpening, right? But it, as I said, in the in a case where you've got a lot of grain, it doesn't tend to do uh, a great job. Um, but in in a smoother type photograph, uh, it can be quite striking. Okay, so uh, that's it. That's sort of the the step through of uh, the tools available to you for correcting, you know, a, a washed out image like that. And I hope it has been informative for you. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.